Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to go through uh, genetics, uh, specifically Mendelian genetics. Okay, we're going to go through what that is. And inheritance, so how things, uh, how characteristics are inherited, okay, from the parents to the offspring. All right, now firstly, there are a few terms that you need to know. You need to know what DNA is, okay, you need to know what a gene is, you need to know what an allele is, okay, and you need to know what a chromosome is. All right, now DNA, okay, is the molecule of inheritance, okay, so it's the molecule of inheritance. And importantly, a lot of people think that DNA is separate from all of these other things, genes, alleles, chromosomes, but it's not. G uh, DNA is just what makes up genes and chromosomes, okay? And allele is just a type of gene, as we'll come on to in a second. All right, and if you know, want to know what it stands for, DNA is just deoxyribonucleic nucleic acid okay that's all one word deoxyribonucleic right so it's a mouthful but it's deoxyribonucleic acid all right now a gene is a section of dna all right because dna is a huge molecule a section of dna which codes codes for a characteristic characteristic okay now I'm going to put in brackets here, protein, all right, because basically a gene codes for a characteristic, for example, hair color, okay, Your ge a gene could mean, um, it could tell you basically what color hair you've got, okay, either blonde um, or brown hair or red hair or black hair, okay, that could all come under a gene, but the reason why you actually have brown hair or blonde hair is not because just the DNA says so and that's it, it's because the DNA actually codes for a protein and that protein will look yellow or it will look brown or it will look red and so on, okay, so when we say that a gene codes for a characteristic, more specifically, okay, and for higher tier, you do need to know this, You it codes for a protein. All right, now an allele is a version, okay, of a gene. So, for example, a gene would be the gene for hair color, okay? It's a section of DNA that codes for the hair color. Each allele is the separate version of the gene which gives you the separate colored hair. So for example, you will have a blonde hair allele, you'll have a brown haired allele, and so on and so on and so on. But the gene is the hair color gene, okay? And that's the difference uh, between the two, All right? Now a chromosome is a section of DNA, of DNA, okay, which contains genes all right so chromosomes basically if you look down a microscope when a cell is dividing you can see the chromosomes okay if you looked on my previous video the drawings where you have a stick showing dna those things are chromosomes all right and they contain multiple genes all right and those are the words you need to know all right so now before we look into the the way that inheritance works we need to talk a little bit about uh, the person who basically discovered it. And that is Mendel, okay, or Gregor Mendel. Okay, I'll put in brackets here, Gregor Mendel. And he is widely acknowledged to be the father of genetics, all right? And that's because he um, studied the, uh, the different characteristics of peas in his garden because he was a monk. So in the monastery, he looked at peas, and some were yellow and some were green, some were wrinkled and some were smooth, and he had a look at um, how those characteristics were passed on when those pea plants were bred with each other. All right, now this was in the 1800s, okay? He was actually born in 1822, and he was a monk. He observed pea plants uh, there we go, that's slightly neater. Okay, pea plants, bred them, and studied how characteristics were passed 
to the offspring. All right, now it's important to note that this was before DNA was discovered. All right, and so obviously his findings were met with um, criticism because there was no proof about what it was that was being passed on. Okay, but after Mendel had died, so in the 1900s, people began publishing um, more studies which agreed with Mendel's theories. Okay, so I'll just write here in the 1900s. Okay, more studies agreed with him. All right, so studies agreed. And so his theories were actually proven. And obviously when DNA um, was discovered, then you could see exactly what it was that was being passed from parents to offspring. All right, so let's have a look now at how inheritance actually works. Okay, so inheritance. And what we need to remember is that DNA is passed from parents to offspring, okay? What we have in all of our cells in humans, okay, is 46 chromosomes. Okay, 46 chromosomes. And that's 23 from mother and 23 from the father. Now, these chromosomes are all different from each other and they're found in pairs, okay? So, the 23 chromosomes are separate. So we have chromosome, for example, I'll just write CHR for chromosome one, okay? And we'll have two of them. So we'll have one, two, all right? One from the mother and one from the father. And then chromosome two is a separate type of chromosome, okay? And we'll have one from the mother and one from the father. And so on and so on and so on until you get to chromosome type 22, okay? And they are different. We'll have one from the mother and one from the father. And then chromosome pair or type 23 is the sex chromosomes and you have an X chromosome from the mother and a Y chromosome from the father. Okay, you could get an X chromosome from the mother and an X chromosome from the father. Okay, and that would make the offspring female. However, if you inherit a Y chromosome from the father, that makes you male, okay? So the, which one of those you inherit from your mother or father determines whether the offspring is male or female, okay? Now, anyway, so the chromosomes are in pairs and each type of chromosome, for example, chromosome one, that might contain uh, a gene for hair color and, or eye color, say. Let's use eye color. So you've got brown eyes versus blue eyes, for example. Yeah, and if you have brown eyes and blue eye gene on the chromosome one, you will have got one allele from your mother, and that might either be the brown or the blue, and you will have got one allele from your father, and that might be either green, um, brown or blue, okay? And then the resulting eye color of the child will depend on which ones they've inherited from their parents. And so using this information, okay, Let's use the brown and blue. I'm going to say the capital B is equal to brown-eyed allele, okay? And a small b is equal to blue-eyed allele, okay? Now, what we're going to draw here is known as a Punnett square. Punnett square. Okay? And it will look something like this. Now, importantly, each allele is given a letter, um, either capital or lowercase, and that really does make a difference. But let's say, for example, we have a, uh, two parents, and both of them have one brown-eyed allele and one blue-eyed allele, okay? So let's say, for example, the mother is on the top. She's got a brown eye, and she's got a blue-eyed allele. That doesn't mean she's got one brown and one blue eye, okay? That's very different. Um, and the father has the same genetic information. What you do is you basically add a cross uh, to find out uh, what the genetic information for the offspring could be. Now, if the offspring received the capital B from the mother and the capital B from the father, then they would be big B, big B, like so. If they received the small B from the mother and the big B from the father, it would be big B, small B. Vice versa, if they received the big B from the mother and the small B from the father, it would be big B, small b, okay? Normally we write the capital letters first. And then this last one would be small b from the mother, small b from the father, and so it'd be small b, small b, okay? Now, 
What happens with alleles are the ones in capital letters, okay, they are what we call dominant. Okay, I'm going to write it just, uh, let's zoom this up, I'll write it just above here, okay, this is the dominant allele. What that means is if you have a mixture of this one and the other one, this will be the characteristic that's given, okay. The, the small letter is known as recessive, all right, recessive. Okay, it's like that, and that means that you need both of the alleles to be that um, of that type in order for that characteristic to be given. And so, we have a look um, at what we have in the Punnett square. Let's do this in a different color. Okay, this first one, the big B, big B. Okay, you've got two um, brown-eyed alleles, and so that's of course going to have brown eyes. Okay, this one here on the right. Now, it's got one big B and one small b, but the dominant masks the recessive, okay? You need two recessives to show that characteristic, so this will still be brown, as will this one down here. But then this last one, you have two blue-eyed alleles and no brown-eyed alleles, and so this offspring would have blue eyes, okay? And so what you have as a result is three out of four chance, okay, of getting brown eyes and one out of four getting blue eyes. So I could say 75% chance brown eyed and 25% chance blue eyed. Okay. All right, and now if you're doing the higher paper, there are a couple more terms that you need to know. For example, if you have someone with two alleles, which are of the same type, either big and big, or small and small, because they are the same, we call that person homozygous. Okay, homozygous. That means they have two of the same alleles. If someone has two different alleles, okay, we call them heterozygous. All right. Now, the genetic makeup of an individual, for example, which uh, which alleles do they have? Okay, so the alleles equal that person's genotype, okay, because it's basically saying which genes have they got, right? Which alleles, which are versions of genes. Okay, and the physical characteristics as a result, characteristics, okay, that is something we call the phenotype of an individual. Okay, so for example, if I go back up, I know that this person and this person are both homozygous, whereas the other two are heterozygous. However, these three people, so one, two, three, their phenotype is brown eyes, whereas this last person in the bottom right, this person's phenotype is blue eyes, all right, and that's the difference between the terms. Now, finally, there are two conditions you need to know. One is dominant and one is recessive. The first is polydactyly, okay, polydactyly. Okay, that's always a tricky one to spell. But that basically means that the patient or the person who's suffering from the condition has extra fingers or toes. All right, and this is a dominant disorder. Okay, so for example, if someone has the uh, genotype P, P, okay, they're homozygous dominant, they obviously have polydactyly. If someone has P, P, they still have polydactyly, okay? They still have the condition because they have the, uh, the dominant allele. Whereas if someone is small P, small P, okay, this person is healthy, okay? Because they do not have either of the dominant alleles um, which code for polydactyly. Okay, the other one is a recessive disorder, okay, and that is cystic fibrosis. Cystic 
fibrosis. All right, now cystic fibrosis is a disorder that affects affects the lungs. It affects the pancreas. Okay, and uh, a lot of other things as well. What it actually does is it clogs uh, the the different passages of the body up with mucus, okay? So they're clogged up with mucus, which means it's harder to breathe, and it causes all sorts of other complications, right? Also, someone with cystic fibrosis, uh, often it means that they are infertile, so they can't have children, okay? Now this is a recessive disorder, okay? So it's a recessive disorder. For example, if you see someone um, with big C, big C as their genotype, okay, they are healthy, Okay, um, put the L in there. There we go, they're healthy. If someone is heterozygous, so they are big C, little c, they are also healthy, but we call those people carriers, right? I'm going to put that in brackets there, carriers, because they are carrying the disease allele, but it doesn't affect them, so they don't have cystic fibrosis, right? What it does mean is that um, if they... Um, had a child with someone else who was a carrier, there's a chance that their child is affected with cystic fibrosis, right? So they're carrying the allele, but they are not affected by the condition. Lastly, small c, small c, so homozygous recessive, that person is affected, okay? Affected, and so they have the condition cystic fibrosis, all right? Now, just really quickly, I'll draw you a quick uh, Punnett square for cystic fibrosis, because it's a common question. All right, if, for example, you had two heterozygous parents, this would be very similar uh, to the one we did with the eyes. Okay, heterozygotes look like this. You would get uh, this scenario occurring, um, and so you could work out the chance of the child having the condition. Now, the two parents are carriers, and if the big... C and the big C are combined, you have a child who is not affected and also is not a carrier of the allele, okay? These two are carriers, okay, of the condition, but they don't, they're not affected by the condition, but they're carriers of the disease allele. And the last person is homozygous recessive, has cystic fibrosis, okay? So if you were to think about the probabilities, you've got 25%, okay, non-carriers, Okay, non-carriers, so they're not affected. You've got 50% carriers, carriers who are who are not affected either, but they carry the uh, d the disease allele, and you've got 25% chance of having an affected child. Right, so in total, that's obviously 75% chance of not having an affected child and 25 of having one okay but 50 percent chance that your child is going to at least be a carrier of the disease all right and we're going to stop there i think that's enough information uh for one video so if there is anything that still remains unclear please feel free to comment in the box below or send me a direct email using the link in the description box uh, but i hope that made sense and i look forward to seeing you in the next one